Hi everyone and welcome to Kasim Adelis. We brought a new lecture for you. In this video we will talk about most common pathognomonic sign used in medical sciences. We will cover most common 50 pathognomonic sign in our video. So first of all we have to discuss what is pathognomonic sign. Actually a particular sign whose presence clears or confirm the diagnosis of a disease means if a particular sign is present you can confirm it is associated dead disease it is the pathognomic sign of dead disease it actually confirmed the diagnosis so if you, you will find any sign in the patient you can confirm the diagnosis so first most important sign is colon sign what is colon sign actually colon sign is a superficial edema or bruising in the subcutaneous fatty tissue around the umbilicus it's most important sign colon sign it's the pathognomonic sign of the disease acute pancreatitis here you can see the colon sign next is coplic spot coplic spot is most important and in disease we will see measles it is a patho uh, pathognomonic sign of measles uh, it is actually small white spots on inside of the cheeks like inside of the mouth here you can see the coplic spot next is morphe sign morphe sign is uh, most common and everyone uh, about morphe sign it's actually pain on deep inspiration uh, when inflamed gallbladder is palpated when we touch the inflamed gallbladder it feels like uh, tenderness it's a pathognomonic sign of acute cholecystitis here you can see the morphe sign next is leonine faces it's actually the thickened line like faces line like appearance on the face skin it's pathognomonic sign of leprosy and it's most important and most common you see in the patients this is the pathognomonic sign of leprosy next is spider angioma spider angioma is actually dilated arterioles uh, clustered uh, very close to the skin uh, superficial layer of the skin it's the pathognomonic sign of liver cirrhosis liver cirrhosis most important sign of liver cirrhosis this is the spider angioma next is gray turner sign gray turner sign is actually ecchymosis in the flank area uh, it's the pathognomonic sign of chronic hemorrhagic pancreatitis here you can see this sign often you see on the instagram or other sites next is kernig sign it's actually severe stiffness of hamstring hamstring muscles cause an inability to straight leg when hips is flexed to 90 degree when this sign is positive it means the disease is meningitis it's a pathognomonic sign of meningitis here you can see the kernig sign next is Berndowski sign it's actually severe neck stiffness causes patient hip and knees to flex when neck is flexed when you flex neck hips and knees also flex it's also pathognomic sign of meningitis here you can see this is the Berndowski sign next is levine sign it's the most important in the cardiology it's actually hand clenching of chest when patient come with hand clenching of chest it's a pathognomonic sign of angina pectoris mean chest pain like patient come like this next is joystick sign it's uh, actually the contraction of ipsilateral facial muscles when we tap on the facial nerve area so it's confirmed the diagnosis of hypocalcemia or chitney this is a joystick sign next is trosso sign trosso sign is actually when a carpo pedal spasm of hand and wrist occur after individuals wear blood pressure uh, cuff and inflated over systolic for two to three minutes and uh, patient feels spasm this is pathognomonic sign of uh, hypocalcemia here you can see the trosso sign like spasm like this 
next is chipmunk faces chipmunk faces it's actually the parotid gland swelling it's the pathognomonic sign of bulmia nervosa here this is the chipmunk faces appearance next is rhesus sardonicus it's most important and it's abnormal sustained spasm sustained spasm of the facial muscles it's a pathognomonic sign of tetanus there like this spasm if you see this is tetanus next is gover sign gover sign is the actually muscle uh, inability to lift trunk without using hands mean patient uh, can't lift his trunk without using hands this is the pathognomonic sign of muscular dystrophy like uh, you here you can see patient have to lift his trunk like this with the help of hands next is rose spots rose spots actually the red macules uh, about 2 to 3 mm on the abdomen this is a sign of typhoid fever also you can see on endocarditis this is a rose spots next is barrel chest barrel chest is broad deep chest it's the pathognomonic sign of emphysema here you can see the barrel chest next some symptoms pathognomonic symptoms like butterfly rash sle system lupus arthros erythematosus moon faces in cushing disease uh, strawberry tongue you can see in uh, kawasaki disease it's a pathognomonic of kawasaki next is exophthalmos most important in endocrine uh, endocrine ward uh, is the grave disease if you will see rice watery stools uh, it's the cholera if you will see the machine like uh, murmur on auscultation it's the pathognomonic sign of patent ductus arteriosus you will see the pill rolling tremors you will see in neurology ward it's the parkinson disease if uh, wheezing on expiration in the pulmonology ward it asthma if we see red beefy tongue it's the pernicious anemia uh, protruding uh, tongue it's actually down syndrome next is pseudomembrane on tonsils you will see pseudomembrane on tonsils it's the sign of diphtheria uh, rusty sputum it's the symptom of pneumonia uh, patishi or uh, harman sign it's the sign of dengue and uh, olive like mass if you will see it's pyloric stenosis bronze like if skin pigment you will see then it is a sign of addison disease one is charcot striated charcot striated is actually the uh, pathognomonic symptoms of multiple sclerosis ascending muscle weakness pathognomonic symptom of gullion bar syndrome gullion bar syndrome is actually the ascending muscle weakness homan sign is deep wing thrombosis barking cough and inspiratory striders you will see in uh, child it's croup 3d drawling means uh, 3d symptoms drawling dysphonia dysphagia it's epiglottitis salty skin if you feel like salty skin uh, cystic fibrosis boosing sign boosing sign is actually the prominent forehead it's hydrocephalus bull's eye rash it's lame disease cat's eye reflex it's retinal blastoma thank you very much if you like my video please subscribe the channel and share to other medical students for a sharp and creative knowledge of